This is a very special side-by-side -side episode. In this episode, we'll be looking at the Sega Dreamcast, which was released November 1998, and the Sony PlayStation 2, which was released March 2000. There are so many videos online diving deep into the hardware specs of the PS2 and Dreamcast, so we're not going to be going into all of that. Just know that the PlayStation 2 is a more powerful console, but the Dreamcast is better at stuff that the PS2 can't do well, like anti-aliasing, better VRAM, and higher resolutions. There's a lot of back and forth when it comes to the specs, but the end result puts the PS2 hardware at top. With that being said, let's dive deep into these comparisons. We'll be looking at 5 games, so let's get started. We will start with Resident Evil Code Veronica on the Dreamcast and Code Veronica X on the PlayStation 2. The Dreamcast is a lot darker. I even brightened it up a small amount. There is also more saturation on the Dreamcast too. Visually, it looks a lot more crisp in visuals. The background here is more sharp. The fire on the PS2 is a better color. It looks more natural. This is pretty interesting. There isn't any barbed wire on the PlayStation 2. closer look at the zombie, there is some extra fire on the PS2. The Dreamcast is slightly sharper, but the PS2 offers more color variation with the red, yellow, orange, and browns. The Dreamcast is just mainly pink and purple. Overall, these two are very comparable. Better colors on the PS2 and sharper visuals on the Dreamcast. Although the Dreamcast is more crisp, it is also more pixelated, where the PS2 looks like it offers more colors. It just looks smoother. Could be because it's more blurry though. The Dreamcast seems to have more aliasing, more jaggies. Also, back to the pixelation, more of it going on on the Dreamcast. But that floor looks great. Like, if you look at the door, the Dreamcast seems to have more aliasing. The PS2 does have some ghosting though, but you don't notice it really at full speed. This kid with the very annoying voice has a better hairstyle on the PS2, at least in my opinion. Again with more pixelation on the Dreamcast, but his sexy choker is better looking over here. The hair is so much better on the PS2, it's a nice change. This is a hard one for me to pick, I do like aspects from both of them, so let's just watch her walk a little bit. I like the lighting effects on this scene. It's pretty sweet looking. The frame rate on both is a solid 30 frames. I didn't see any dips, but I'm sure there is. I'm going to give this one a tie. I know the Dreamcast is sharper, but I think the PS2 looks better at times. So since I can't really decide, it's a tie. Next up, we'll look at Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future. Here is the opening cinematic. It seems that they remade it for the PS2. It is longer and the camera pans differently. I shortened the PS2 version to match the Dreamcast when it cuts to new scenes. Space is much better on PlayStation. I like what they did here. Going into gameplay, the PS2 has better draw distance. You can see the door a lot better. On this scene, when jumping out of water, the Dreamcast wins by a landslide. Just looks smoother and more crisp. Looking at the ocean's floor, the PS2 shows off the sunlight reflection from the waves, and not on the Dreamcast. A very nice touch indeed. So yes, a well. But what I want you to see is the top of the water. The waves look better on this side, at least it does to me. Just like in the beginning, the cutscenes are ever so slightly different. The PS2s are longer, so I had to cut them down to match with the Dreamcast. On this shot, the PlayStation's door decorations look better. A small thing, but better is better. Then they changed the crystal. The bottom of the PS2 looks better, but the crystal on the Dreamcast looks better. The PS2 shows off a lot more light shimmers. I'm not really sure if that's an improvement or not though. Then after the cutscene, the Dreamcast goes straight to gameplay, which I prefer even though I was stuck for a bit at this part. The PlayStation 2 will show you exactly where to go. When I game, I like to figure stuff out on my own, so I feel like the PS2's version is just holding your hand here. 
super pretty screenshot for that PlayStation 2. An even better screenshot for the Dreamcast. I feel like the Dreamcast is a lot sharper in visuals, but lacks in detail. Like the ocean floor is better on the PlayStation 2. Move to this scene for example. The reflections on the floor and the rocks is more apparent on the PlayStation, and the textures of the rocks look more natural and not so smooth like on the Dreamcast. Let's see some frame rate now. Visually, I do not see a difference in frames, so I'm not too sure how accurate the Dreamcast FPS is here. But it jumps all over the place. The Dreamcast is 50 frames down to 20 when I'm in combat. That's when it dips the most. The PS2 is 30 to 20. I'd say it mostly sticks around to the 25 range. Next we will look at the game Mind Hunter. This isn't a big game by any means, but it does have its fun moments. The Dreamcast looks better and so far not even a reason to freeze frame to dive deep in. It's just better. Both control the same and combat is pretty fun with the rolling and cover system. When you're in your awesome little base, we see that the Dreamcast looks better again. These reflections on the floor are nicer and the curtains show more detail. And same with the backyard, just more crisp. Aliasing seems to be the exact same on both, but so far the Dreamcast wins, hands down. On this shot, the PS2 has better anti-aliasing as the black line at the bottom of the wall isn't broken up like it is on the Dreamcast. The girl looks way better on the Dreamcast, but one tiny thing I noticed was the letter M on the bottle on the PlayStation 2, and it's not present over here. In fact, it also looks like this label is different too. And yet, another bottle with a new label. It seems odd to me to change the labels, it's not like you can read them anyway. The Dreamcast does have better anti-aliasing implemented into their hardware, so overall all the games should look better from an aliasing standpoint. Looking at the chain-linked fence, you see that the super sample anti-aliasing the Dreamcast uses just smooths it out. On PS2, you can see that it's a fence. At times, the PS2's more blurry graphics looks better because it's easier on the eyes, but overall, the Dreamcast wins. With them both locked at 60 frames, I guess the Dreamcast wins, but honestly, not by much. It's a ported game to the PlayStation 2 so that didn't sell a whole lot, so they probably didn't even bother to enhance it a whole lot when it was on the PlayStation 2. Moving on to Crazy Taxi, it is so much better looking on the Dreamcast. It's not the PS2's fault, as Sega didn't utilize the hardware to add any extra polygons that the PS2 can handle, or more colors or lighting effects, as the PlayStation 2 is better at that stuff. But honestly, how can component cables compete with the Dreamcast's superior VGA output? It just can't. When in gameplay, we see that the street actually looks better in the PS2, it shows the white lines better. The sidewalk and overall textures looks better on the PS2, but the draw distance is slightly better on the Dreamcast, and I mean extremely little. Looking at this screenshot, the Dreamcast is super sharp, the ramp looks pretty nice, then when landing, the wall is so much clearer on the Dreamcast. The PS2 is just so blurry, and at first I thought motion blur, but the trees in the background, they're not blurred at all. I'd say the Dreamcast wins this one, but the PS2 looks very nice too. How about the FPS? Well, they're both at 60 frames. They run smooth and fast and both look great when you're doing fast turns. Now onto the last game, Virtual Tennis 2. These are looking very similar, but if we look at the netting, you can see the individual lines on the Dreamcast and a smooth net on the PS2. But to be honest, I prefer the smooth net, as the flickering lines kind of annoys me. Zooming in, the Dreamcast offers more detail. The tennis racket on the PS2 is just super jaggy. When in motion, I do prefer the PlayStation 2 mainly because of the net. It just kind of bugs me. How's the frame rate? Well, the Dreamcast is a solid 60 frames and the PS2 is a solid 30. And just looking at them, I can see that. So at the end of the day, I guess the Dreamcast wins. It's obvious that the PlayStation 2 is a more powerful console, but all these games were released in the early days of the PS2 and developers haven't learned to fully utilize the PS2's hardware yet. There's no way you would ever see God of War 2, Shadow of the Colossus, or Metal Gear Solid 2 on the Dreamcast. So what I'm about to say isn't me saying that the Dreamcast was better, but it was better at its own games that were ported to PlayStation 2. 
All these games look great on both systems. I just think with the VGA cable, it can't go wrong with the look of these crisp visuals. Well, that's all I have for you today, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. It really helps this channel grow. And take it easy.